Good like morning, everybody. Thank you for coming. Bruce is going to read a short statement out first, and then we're going to open up any questions you have. We will ask all questions that you've got. Um, obviously, we have to be wary of giving names. It will give you as much detail. And anybody who wants interviews afterwards, we have to stay around and wait long for everybody. So I'll let you take the give a statement. <coughs> I never thought I'd be doing what I'm doing today. I have quite a lot to cover, and after I've done that, my husband will explain to you a lot of evidence we have come across in the past coming months. My Ricky was the most beautiful person I have ever known. He was sweet, cheeky, and full of life. Mischief as well, and he never had a bad bone in his body. I love him so much it hurts. Ricky was so very, very bright. He never held no prisoners lightly. He idolised his sisters. There were tantrums, arguing, falls out, and shouting that went on, but he loved them totally. Ricky had a habit of getting broken electrical things. He would pull them apart and slowly put them back together. They would work. He was good with his hands. Ricky could fix anything. I was and still proud of him. What really broke my heart was the fact I never was allowed to have anything of Ricky at all. It was either destroyed or trashed by neighbours, photographs of which were sold to the press for drugs. I know that as a fact because a person said it in their statement at the time and said, who gave them the pictures to them after Ricky died? The fact is no one can take my memories away from me. Oh, the truth. I was completely let down by the police and social services and people who just chucked me under the bus. For what reason? To save their own skin. All the lies in their statements and to the media were all about money. I've been telling the truth for 20, 20 years and no one has ever listened to me until I met my husband Gary. I told him everything from the word go and he said, whenever you are ready to deal with this, I will stand behind you 100%. It, it took a while for me to trust him. So after four years, we started this journey and we'll never stop until we get justice for Ricky. There was a lot of criminal activity going on on this day as it was and there was a load of lies in the statements that even the people who lied got anonymity of any offences they had done etc. After all these lies were spilling out left right and centre. We will fight this to the end. Other people have an agenda and I say get on with it. I know as well people do not want the truth coming out because they are one way or another up to their neck in it. 20 years of my life has been a nightmare. My life, has cha my life did change when Ricky died. I also died too. It will never ever be the same again. I have been intimidated, bullied, threatened and guess what? I'm not going away ever. I will do what I have to do to get to the truth and no one is ever going to stop me. I was shocked one day when Gary asked me whether Ricky had lost a tooth. I said, no. Oh, yes, he said he has. They had their own offices in there, so why did they dismiss it? Ricky was left with all his teeth in his mouth. I know that as a fact because his, because his front tooth, he would have had a lisp. And he didn't speak like that at all. One person that asked me said, well, could you have swallowed it? I very much doubt it because it wasn't in his stomach contents. I miss my Ricky so much. Ricky was usually by my side until he was old enough to go out to play. And even when he was with me a lot of the time, but someone was teaching him to steal, paid him money to steal. Day before he went missing on the Sunday, I heard that he nicked a box of chocolates for somebody and they paid him money. At the time, the police said, did you kill him over a box of chocolates? No, I don't think so. The school really jarred me off in places. I had the school ring me if Ricky never went to school or he'd run out of school. I had that in place because by third hand, I um, found out that he was wandering the streets while he should have been at school. I was, I was furious, that's when I asked the school to ring me if he did not turn up or when he ran out of school or even bullied. I should have rung up and they didn't. They rung me up on a Tuesday, but it was a bit late then. Tuesday when Ricky was found dead, like I said, the school rang me telling me he never went to school on the Monday. Then I found out 20 years later that he never went to school at all on the Monday either. 
but school never rang me at all until the Tuesday. If I had known, I would have looked for him until I found him, and the probability of him being found dead would be zillion to one, without a doubt in my mind. Ricky's favourite food was sausages, chips, burgers and pizzas. He would generally eat a lot of stuff, but that was his favourite. He loved his coke, he drank that out of fashion. He hated wearing tops at a degree. All he wore in the summer was shorts, trainers and socks. He used to tan beautifully, everywhere was dark brown and he had a little white bum. My regret was moving to Peterborough, my fault, and I've got to live with that for the rest of my life. Yes, Ricky was a challenge, but it would not be Ricky if he was good all the time. He knew right from wrong in, the early, in his early life. He was a cheeky monkey, full of mischief and such a cute face. He would look at me and put on his baby eyes. They made me melt every time. He was the most cutest boy ever. Ricky's siblings have grown to believe all the lies and I've contacted all three and after explaining facts they still believe all the lies. There will be no reconciliation any time soon. They know my number, I'm always at the other end of the phone and I say never say never. Looking back, I can't stress enough how I coped. I was not eating myself, I was not on drugs, as people said I was. I was trying to sort my life out and get bad people out of my life. I'm not proud of the things that I have done. I've, no, I'm not proud of what I've done. I'm not proud of a lot of things, but at the end of the day, I shouldn't take things for granted. You know, I will never ever forget what Joy Ricky gave me in his short life and how much I love him. One last thing, um, I, what was it? one last thing, people on the Wednesday, we know you have something, you know something about where Ricky was that night and who killed him and why he was killed. It could have been your mother, your father, your uncle, your aunt, your son, your daughter, your cousin, nephew, niece, old, new neighbours who acted weird that night or probably never came home that night at all, until 7am the following morning. These people are not going to come forward lightly, and I'm not silly, but a prick of conscience may play a part somewhere. If anyone saw one, two, three, or even four people early Tuesday morning between 4am to 8am in the area of Belvoir Way, the woods of I Road, we'd be grateful. Does not matter how big or small, please ring 101 or even Crime Stoppers. Or you can contact us on ricky.info at mail.com. And it is private and confidential if you want to be anonymous. That is it. Questions?